everyone! My name is Faith, and today I'm going to be teaching you how to make paper mache eyes so that you can learn more about how your pupils take in light. This is also, since we're making paper mache, this is also a chemical reaction like other Rosie Riveters videos. Without further ado, let's begin! What you need for this activity is old newspaper, flour, water, a knife or scissors or a pin to pop your balloon when you're ready, optional paint and paint brushes so you can paint your paper mache, two ba one blank piece of paper to compare the light size with, a big mixing bowl for your paper mache, and two round balloons. They can't be the long ones because that won't work. You can use water balloons or you can use regular balloons. Okay, so what you need to do first is blow up your balloons and you're going to take your two, take your balloons and your two coins. You have your quarter and your penny. What you're going to do is your pen or a marker or pencil or whatever you're using, you're going to put one quarter on one balloon and just draw a little circle around the balloon or around the quarter so that you know where not to put the paper mache. Because this will be your pupil. Then you take it out. You put your finger in the middle and you turn it over. Make sure that your quarters are as lined up as possible. See that? They're pretty much lined up directly. Yep, I can see that all right. So then, just like you did the last time, you're going to draw your circle around your quarter. And you're going to do the same thing with the other balloon, except this time, if you're using water balloons, with a penny. So, put your penny in. Depending on what color balloon you have um, and what color marker, it might be harder for you to see the marker after it dries, but it's there. So then, oops. So then, same thing. Make sure it's directly lined up or as exact as possible. And then draw your next circle. Right like that. And then you're going to put your balloon to the side. So if you were using regular size balloons instead of water, bu water balloons, you're going to use a ketchup bottle lid or a different kind of lid that's about the same size and a smaller water bottle lid to draw your circles. You want to make sure that your regular size balloon is not one of the longer ones like ones for making balloon animals but a regular round one. So now we're going to be making the paper mache. What you want to do is take one cup of water and pour it in your bowl. Nice and carefully. And then you're going to do the same thing with flour. You want the same amount of water as you do flour. Now I'm using a half cup of flour, but I'm going to do two. Nice and even, just like that. And then with your second cup, nice and even like that. Cut. And then with your spoon or spatula, you're going to stir the flour in the water. Now, if you're mixture is too dry and it's not very liquidy you're going to want to add more water and if it's too and if it's too wet so there's too much water and it's not like a real paste like liquid 
you're going to want to add more flour. So, in the end, you want a mixture that looks a little bit like this. So, this kind of consistency. This is good. Now, this is the really fun part. It's okay to get your hands a little messy, but you probably are going to want to put a newspaper down over your surface so that you don't get any paper mache on your surface. So, what you're going to do is take a strip of your paper and you, if it's long like that one, you might want to rip it in half and you're going to dip it in the bowl and make sure that the whole thing gets covered in the paper mache every last bit. You don't want to see any blank paper, otherwise it might not stick as well. So then, once you have the whole surface well covered, you're going to want to take your balloon and put your paper strip over your balloon, right like that. Just like that. And you want to keep going until the whole balloon, except the pupil or the circle that you drew, is covered. So then you want to do it again. Your, this might get harder as you go because it's getting stickier and stickier where your hands are. So if you want to dip it without using your hands, that's okay too. It might be easier if you use your hands though. See another strip. And it's good if it overlaps, because then you have a nice, strong hold. And make sure you don't cover your pupil, otherwise you're going to have to cut into the paper mache. And after it dries, it's going to be very hard and not easy to cut. So you're just going to repeat until all the balloons are covered. After you finish paper mache both of your balloons, you're going to want to put them aside to let them dry. It may take longer than 24 hours to do this because if you use a lot of paper mache, it'll be really thick and it'll take a longer time to dry. It could take up to three days. Ours took two and because we, um, instead of like getting it really thick on the piece of newspaper, we thinned it out. So we took our fingers and we just rubbed over it so that it wasn't it wasn't building up a thick layer of paper mache. So after your paper mache is dry, you're going to want to pop the balloon underneath the paper mache. So you might want to have a parent help you with this. You can use a knife, a pin, or um, scissors, anything that can that is sharp enough to pop the balloon. And then if the balloon gets stuck inside that's fine but you want to make sure that you do have two holes right like that so if you can no longer see the hole that you drew that's fine you can just cut a little bit away right like that it should be pretty easy but you should still have an adult help you with this because knives are sharp And all you want to do is just widen the hole so that it fits how it's supposed to. Right like that. So you want to make sure that both of your balloons are popped. You can hear the balloon peeling away from the edge of the paper mache. And then you might just, if it's like that, where it's like, it's blocking the view of the other hole, you just want to reach in. You may have to make your hole a little bit wider and pull out the balloon. See? 
should be pretty okay so next what you want to do is you want to go inside if you were outside and find a window where you can put the piece of paper up against so next what you want to do is you want to hold your balloon or paper mache up close to the piece of paper but not directly touching it because you want to be able to see the light coming through and then after that you want to take your flashlight make sure it's turned on put it right up in the hole can you see the light how big is it so after you hold up your first balloon you're going to want to do the same with the second balloon just put the flashlight in one of the holes and look at and look at the light and the size notice the size in particular of the light on the piece of paper you want to make sure that you put the two balloons in the same place so that watch how big is that light versus this when you put it far away it gets bigger because you're allowing the light to go out and hit the paper in more directions than with up close. It can only go so far. So watch a comparison. You see that? And now that. doing this what have you guys noticed is different have you noticed that the size of the light in this one is smaller than this one vice versa meaning opposite so this one is bigger than this one or are they the same size remember these are your pupils compared to an eye our pupil this one lets in more light so you can see more versus a smaller pupil lets in a less amount of light so you can't see as much. So next time you guys turn out the lights, if you can, it may be hard to see, but you might want to hold up a mirror to your face and see how your pupils get bigger when you turn out the light. So what you need for the science experiment is a mirror. It doesn't have to be big because all you're doing is holding it up to your eye. And a flashlight. You can use a phone flashlight or you can use a camping flashlight or just a regular flashlight. So, what you want to do is hold up the mirror so that you can see one of your eyes. It doesn't matter which one, as long as you can see the whole thing. You want to focus on the round part in the middle. That is called your pupil. It's black. Notice how big it is, how small it is. What size is it? How would you describe it? Count to five in your head so that you can take everything in. Then, once you're done, get your flashlight and shine it in your eye. Make sure you can see your pupil in the mirror. What's happening to it? Is it getting smaller? Is it getting bigger? Notice that for a second. If the shine from the light is starting to hurt your eyes, that's okay. You can close your eyes for a second, like that. You can bring it down. You can turn it off. All of that is fine. And then, once you take the flashlight off, tapping to it now, is it bigger again? It should be getting bigger once you turn off the flashlight because your eye needs to get bigger so that it can take in more light so that you can see. Once it's smaller, it's getting smaller because it doesn't need to be as big to take in as much light. What did you notice about this project? Hope you had a good time!